Well, here we have one of John's monsters here with us. John, can you explain this monster to us a little bit? Well, you're staring at my biggest, baddest monster truck in my collection. Uh, it was originally built with twin nitro engines based on the Giga chassis and powertrain. As the wave of the future is, everyone likes to do brushless conversions. So this truck, instead of the twin nitro engines, has been converted to twin brushless. Not only is it twin brushless, it's using a two-speed tranny out of an Inferno GT2 with steel gears to handle the power. It's uh, based all on Kyosho parts. Uh, the only aftermarket parts are new era side frames, which are full extended chassis plates for the Mad Force. But everything else you see is right out of the Kyosho catalog. The motors are based off the new Mad Force Cruiser, VE brushless. It's uh, grafting two chassis together, the Giga chassis in the middle, the Mad Force on the sides, big tires and <laughs> money-wise, you know, I've spent a pretty good penny on the truck, but... And you can't put a price in fun? No, no. Al, I believe you started with the body first in this truck? All I started with was the Tamiya Land Cruiser body. Everything else uh, has been made to fit. I just finished off the custom chassis with uh, tinned fenders. Helps to uh, keep the junk out of there when I'm running in the dirt. Now you have a leaf spring suspension on the back that is all handmade, it looks like. So I've had it on the rock pile out back and uh, it's done okay uh, for being such a short wheelbase vehicle. Well, thank you very much for bringing it out. Hey, no problem. I'm glad to show it off. Well, folks, now we have Madison here with us. And Madison, you've got some custom-built semis and trailers. Yes, Please I have. Please tell us about them. I have uh, the Tamiya King Hauler. I've basically took the bunk off it, swapped out the tires, rims, put the bull bar on the front, ordered a headache rack for it. Now, from what I understand, you actually built this out of brass tubing and strip? Yes. And you soldered it all together? Yes. There was no kits? No, these two here are built totally from scratch. Uh, just basically going to work and measuring uh, our converters at work and watching the guys on the highway. And actually, if you go on our forum on our website, there's actually build pictures that you have up yes. on there of you doing a step-by-step. -step. Yeah. Uh, these two trailers here, lower down half an inch, move the axles to the back. I put the pinnel hitches on the back for this one and this one. This is a lead trailer. It's set up for a C train and an A train. This is my first build I did. Chopped the deck down, built an air ride suspension system, a simulated air ride suspension system, so that all works. Yeah, it's, uh, this is just my first, first set of projects. I'm uh, an LCV instructor. I, I'm gonna be using it to uh, train drivers in the classroom so they can actually look and understand what I'm talking about without having to go to the yard. Chris, um, I think there's maybe all of five parts stock on this truck, is that right? Anything that you can change from plastic to aluminum, I've done it. As per his recommendation, I went with a steel bumper as opposed to the aluminum bumper. It bends back rather easily. I see you got some studded tires, so I'm guessing you use it in the winter as well. For ice racing, it, it, it moves. It'll do about, uh, I'm guessing, 75 to 80. Nice. And as you can tell, bigger, badder, better. Is that your model, Clay? Kind of still like the Tamiya looks, but as you know, Tamiyas are very basic trucks, very plain. Um, wanted to put on a new age chassis, so that's what I tried to achieve. You might recognize it, it's the Wheelie King chassis with modifications. The blue one, white, is the E-Savage. Same thing with some modifications done to it. More better handling vehicle, a lot more raceability, and just a lot more fun. This thing's just blinding me because it's got like 10 coats of clear on it and the light from the camera is just hitting it. Andy, how did you get it so smooth? Uh, I use all Tamiya lacquer paints and uh, a lot of clear coat <laughs> and a lot of patience. These details here look like they're all done with bare metal foil, is that correct? It's all bare uh, metal foil again with most of my models and then I clear over top of that. Definitely has the real look to it and you've outdone yourself once again, Andy. Thanks. So as you can see, we not only have cars that are show and shine, but we also have some beautiful planes here. Now, if you look at this one, looks like it's got quite a bit of scale detail in it. Can you uh, tell us what you've done to the plane so far? Yeah, this is actually the uh, top flight P40E Warhawk from the uh, Gold Edition. The added detail that I put on was the antenna mass with the antenna here, and I've got the remote droppable uh, external fuel tank with it. This is a brand new uh, fiberglass cowl from Fiberglass Specialties and it's a hand-painted tiger shark's mouth on the front of it, based on the original uh, tiger mouth from the, the first one. 
Well, it's definitely nice to see that you at least use it, and it's not just a shelf queen, but you also take pride into it. Thank you very much for bringing it out. Oh, thanks very much. Well, like all good things, they have to come to an end. Thank you for coming and checking out Eliminator RC second annual show and shine. Let's go have some fun, guys. Well, that's it, Raj, for this week's episode of RC TV. Next week, it's our year-end show. It's the best of. We're going to be seeing some BC off-road racing. We're going to see a quadcopter in action and a flying Green Lantern. And you know what? Wes is finally going to take a bath doing some rock crawling. Good this done. I have yeah. to see. Kawartha Marine Modelers will be joining us with their take tug. And that was a really cool tug. And also, we're going to a skateboard park to see some bashing with some big air. Yeah. Okay, folks, we'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>